Well, I'd like to once again welcome you to this glorious uh, meeting. Uh, we are at the City of David Online, where the love of God reigns, where dreams, your dreams, my dreams will come true, where legends like you and I are born, and tomorrow's testimony that you will share is being worked on by God right now. I hope you believe this is not just a cliche. Take it to the Lord, it's inspired by God, and your dreams will come true in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Who is like unto thee? Oh, oh Lord, who is like unto thee? Oh, oh Lord, among the gods, who is like thee? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, always do in wonders, hallelujah. Eternal confidence, we bless your holy name. We thank you, O Lord, for your mercies that are renewed every morning. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your love. Our gathering is unto you. Please speak to us, encourage us, bless us, deliver us, heal us. At the end of this meeting, let us know that we have had an encounter with you and take all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration, and let every one of us have our own personal testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. We have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. I bring you greetings from my queen, uh, Pastor Shiju, and all the members of the Iliomade household. God bless you. Now, for a while, you know, we've been studying Psalm 91, which I believe is just one of the most important um, psalms for us to read um, this season because it is a covenant of peace uh, and is God's comprehensive insurance for his children. And the premium is already paid. It's an all-risk insurance policy fully paid by the blood of our Lord and Master Jesus Christ. And it guarantees a hedge of all-round protection. And of course, as we know, it comes with loads and loads of benefits. I think we need to, you know, in our quiet time, read often Psalm 91, meditate on it. And it's a good thing that we've been able to, you know, eight, write eight books out of Psalm 91. Eight books based on various uh teachings inspired by the Holy Spirit. And um, you know that this is a book review. Uh, we have reviewed book one, which is God's uh, uh, comprehensive insurance policy. Book two, deliverance from the snare of the fowler. And currently we're reviewing uh, book three, which is uh, between the mother hen and bad mamas. And all these books are available in all our online stores and local stores in Nigeria. Um, and I'd like to, you know, encourage you to pick up, you know, a copy, bless someone, um, and uh, I'm sure that you will uh, be mightily blessed uh, as you delve into these books. Psalm 91, I believe we just want to read verse 4 uh, for the sake of our time. It says, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust his truth shall be thy shield and buckler the lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in jesus mighty name for a while now we've been talking about how god uses um his creation to speak to us and the most important creation that is used to speak to us at least based on these teachings is the mother hen and he says that as we study the mother hen and look at the attributes and mannerisms of the mother hen. It will give you, you know, an insight into some of the attributes of God. And um, I pray that um, God will continue to speak to us through all his creation in Jesus' mighty name. And we've been studying a topic called leading from the front. And I believe that every Christian should be leading from the front. We are the light of the world. We're supposed to show the way. We're supposed to lead by example. And that's what our Lord and Master Jesus Christ did. You need to go in front, uh, let your light shine before men so that they can see your good works and glorify 
our Father, they can follow your footsteps as you follow Christ. This is how a lot of my guys led when he was here. And my prayer is that these teachings will help us in our private lives and in our businesses also. And we'll have awesome testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. Um, about two weeks ago and last week, we asked um, a couple of questions. Um, and thank God we had about 36 people that responded. Uh, we have selected our winners and we'll post them on our platforms after the service. And I'd like to thank you all for participating. We have a chat room. You can ask your questions, pass your comments there. Uh, but most importantly, we have various platforms uh, on which you can answer our questions, which are usually posted there after the service. Uh, we learned that the mother hen provides for and feeds her chicks, just as we leading from the front, either as parents or leaders in business, you need to make provision for your dependents. Uh, and also, of course, we know that God provides for us. And also, we learned that the mother hen, one of the classics of the mother hen, is that she counts her chicks and ensures that none is missing before she leads them into the pen. And that is so important. And I pray that none of us will be missing in Jesus' mighty name. She accounts for all her chicks. It's important if you are leading from the front to know that you have an oversight function and you're responsible for all those that are following you. Last week, we studied another characteristic of a mother hen that the mother hen communicates with her chicks the same way as leaders through the vision and the mission of your company, you communicate with your people, with your team. The mother hen makes distinct sounds to communicate with her chicks. When it comes to a warning, it's usually louder than when she's just telling them to come and eat. Um, and I, I pray that, you know, we would understand that communication is so important. And as we learned, communication can be audible or inaudible. We talked a lot about audible communication the last time we were on this platform. Usually, audible communication can be by use of voice, loud enough to be heard. It needs to be heard and understood for there to be effective communication. Your voice must be altered. You need to speak. You need to communicate. And one of the most important tools that both the mother hen and we as human beings need to communicate is the tongue. You cannot alter a voice or speak without the tongue. It's so important, so much so that James 3, 5 to 12, James 3, 5 to 12 says that even though the tongue is a little member of the body, but if not properly tamed or used, it can set the whole world on fire. Just a wrong communication somewhere, just a little lie somewhere, if believed, can become a major problem. And it is interesting to note that even though we're talking about audible and inaudible communication, that God truly communicate, communicates with us audibly. I think we took some examples the last time we were here. I have heard him speak audibly before. And why wouldn't he communicate audibly? He is the word. You use communications using the tool of your voice to speak that can be heard and understood. So God, who is the word, obviously must be communicated. And I pray that he is communicating with you right now and he will communicate with you today in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says in John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Hebrews 1, 1 to 2. Hebrews 1, 1 to 2 says, God at sundry times and in various manners 
spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. And I pray that God would unstop our ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to a church, even in these times. You need to hear God. He speaks just like you speak to people around you. You communicate with them. They hear you, they understand, and follow your instructions. If by now you have not heard God speak, whether audibly or inaudibly, then you need to run to him to speak to you. And I pray that today, as many of us as want God to communicate with us, God will speak to us to bless us. If need be, he will warn us. He will direct us. If you have some major decisions you need to take, he will teach us as he's teaching us right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. He will instruct us and encourage us. He can do it corporately that is like he's doing right now, but the best one is when during your quiet moments, you hear God speak to you. It's something that you need to yearn for. Remember that we are the bride of Christ. Christ is going to marry the church. And how can you marry someone that you can't communicate with? And the communication must start here on earth before we get to heaven. And as you will not marry someone that you don't communicate with, that doesn't speak to you, when you speak, he doesn't hear, so he can't listen, then it's going to be very difficult for you, be, to, you to be a bride of Christ if you can't hear him speak. My prayer is that whatever is a stumbling block between you and hearing God speak clearly, today will be removed in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the only way the chicks can recognize the sound of their mother, or you can recognize the sound of your friend or of God, is through interaction, intimacy, and association. If there is no intimacy, no association, no fellowship, it's not possible for you to recognize the voice of anybody, talk less God. My prayer is that as we go into these studies, we'll spend more time with God so that we can hear him and understand what he has to say to us. It's important for you to recognize the voice because there are all kinds of voices speaking in the world. You have your voice, you have the voice of God, and you have the voice of Satan. There are many, many voices trying to speak to you, communicate with you, some to derail you. If you believe a lie, it's a problem. So you need to be able to recognize by association, by fellowship, the voice of God. And my prayer is that you will begin to recognize the voice of God when it speaks to you from today in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. And of course, audible voices can be loud and threatening. We gave various examples the other time we we're here. It is because Samuel did not know God, had not spent time with God, had not interacted with God. That was why he could not recognize the voice of God and could not respond when God called him in 1 Samuel 3, 1 to 10. 1 Samuel 3, 1 to 10. He didn't know the voice of God. He didn't even know who God was. Yet, he was in the house of God. And there are many of us like him that because we have not really, really interacted with God, God is speaking and we're not listening. And it's a very dangerous thing because he can speak to one, he can speak to help, he can speak to lead, he can speak to teach, to instruct. May you hear God today in Jesus' mighty name. Of course, you cannot forget the story of the thief on the cross, lastminute.com. He recognized the divinity of Christ, very unlike his fellow thief on the other side. And because of that, and because he recognized that Christ was the Messiah and did not speak unadvisedly, 
God reversed the irreversible concerning him. He that was condemned to go to hell, he that was rejected and his case was hopeless, within the twinkling of the eye, he became someone else that was celebrated and he made heaven. My prayer is that whatever God needs to do to transform your life for the better, to reverse the irreversible, God will do it today in Jesus' mighty name. Now, having studied the audible voice of God, we want to look at the inaudible mode of communication. Inaudible mode of communication. Of course, audible means capable of being heard, usually communicated through voice. We communicate every day. Right now, I'm communicating, I'm speaking, and you're listening. I hope you are listening. You know, so communication through the audible means, means someone is speaking, usually through the voice, and you can hear. Now there's inaudible communication, meaning that if 10 people are here and God wants to speak to someone quietly, others might not hear. He's not capable of being heard. No voice is muted. It's quiet. No sound is voiceless. An inaudible communication can be, you know, by a look, a sign, or body language, a smile, or a frown. In all these cases, there is still communication, but one is voiceless, silent, but there's still communication. For example, when we were growing up, and most people in my generation, Parents used to communicate with us by just looking at us. They just look at you. I can never forget the look of my father. If he looks at you, you understand everything. If you are in trouble, you know. Or shaking their head. Or pointing their fingers. What does this mode of communication mean? They are communicating, looking at you, shaking their head, pointing their fingers. They are communicating, but they're not speaking. But in this new generation, if you are looking at your child in a funny way, you say, mom, I hope there's nothing wrong with their eyes because they don't understand you know, this kind of communication. There is a lot of distraction going on. But I believe that we need to get to that level, because there are some circumstances where it's just impossible for you to speak and you need to communicate. My prayer is that God would teach us in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. I remember in England, I was in a taxi, I was traveling, uh, I was going out, and I saw a snooty child in a, in a, in a Rolls Royce. You know, he was in a little suit with a bow tie. And I said, oh, lovely child, you know. I was admiring the child. And the child, you know, not a black child, you know, just looked at me. I thought he would smile by back. He gave me the finger. If you don't know what the finger means, then I don't know. I can't explain that on this platform. But he gave me a finger. I ran after that cab. I knew that there was nothing I could do. He communicated in a very, very bad. He must have been a racist. Can you imagine the convicting look that God gave Peter in Luke 22, 60 to 61? Peter said, I will never deny you. I will go with you to the very end. And then when they got to where they were passing judgment at night, just a mate said, you look like him. They said, no, I'm sure you are one of them. No, the third time that guy, girl accused him that, you know, he was one of the disciples of Jesus. Peter was cursing. But I don't know that person. He was swearing. And then the Bible says in verse 60, haven't denied Christ. I don't know what you're talking about. Immediately, the rooster crowed, as Jesus said. And at that moment, verse 61 says, the Lord turned and looked at Peter. He didn't speak. Just looked. Hmm. 
Then, of course, it was a convicting look. He remembered that Jesus had said, before the cock crows, you would have denied me three times. He left the place weeping bitterly. Jesus did not speak. He just looked. Is Jesus looking at you? Indeed, the Bible says that there is a cloud of witnesses watching us. So if you think there is nobody there, <laughs> he's watching you. That was why Joseph rebuffed the advances of Potiphar's wife. Potiphar's wife said, there is nobody here. Just you and me said, no, 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 no. God is here. He's watching. May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. Do you have any personal experiences of, you know, uh, what we're talking about today? There's a way you look at someone and send many messages without speaking. For example, you can express anger, frown your eyes, frustration, joy. If you're doing like this, you know, I'm happy. <laughs> love, you can read it. Literally, read love. Discipline, when you want to discipline someone, they can see it in your face. Excitement, just like joy. You know, I'm not speaking, but I'm communicating. They say he's happy. Without uttering a single word. Another audible or inaudible way that God can communicate is through dreams. Hmm. Dreams can be audible and they can be inaudible. But not all dreams are from God. For example, nightmares. In those days when we used to watch horror movies, you are sure to have a nightmare that day. We had no understanding that there can be transference of spirits through what you expose yourself to. The living dead. Omen, all those things. It's only God that saved us. Some people are say having horrific nightmares based on their exposure to evil. And again, Exodus 5.3a, Exodus 5.3a says, if there's too much activity, you can sleep and you dream. But you see, God has told us in Joel 2.28, Joel 2.28 says, a time will come when God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh, and our daughters will prophesy, old men shall dream dreams, and young men shall see visions. So, I mean, all these things have been prophesied. There are, there are, there are people who dream, spiritual dreams. God can communicate to you through a dream. Job 33, 14 to 16. Job 33, 14 to 16. Job said, for God, for God speaketh once, yes, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon the bed, then he opens the ears of men and seals their instruction. So when you sleep, God might communicate with you. My prayer is that we will no longer sleep all those sleeps where you, you, you just sleep carelessly, salivating, snoring away, you know? And it's because of you that God cannot afford to sleep or slumber because he has to protect you because even if they pour a whole bucket of water on you, you won't wake up. But as the smell of dodo or food, Oh, some people will jump up. Amen. May God help us in Jesus' mighty name. Now, let's ask the question. Why does God speak through dreams? What does he want to achieve by speaking through dreams? You can answer in the chat room or answer on our platforms. I believe there are many reasons, but today we just zero in on one. To catch your attention when all noise and all are daily routine is muted some of us are too busy is either you're watching television or you're in the gym or you're chatting away and god wants to communicate with you he wants to tell you something but you're too busy so he waits until when 
you sleep. And when he gives a dream, it's to warn, to admonish. I get a lot of dreams warning me. I've shared some of them. To teach, to direct. Sometimes he reveals the future, future occurrences. Sometimes he blesses in your dream. He can give instructions. And sometimes just to encourage us. Have you experienced God speaking and giving you instructions or revealing the future or give you directions or to bless you or to warn you? The best answer will get a gift. So please remember, we want to hear from you, we want to learn from you. So people who have not experienced God speaking to them and instructing in dreams can be expectant. God is no respecter of persons. If he can do it even unto you, he'll do it unto us in Jesus' mighty name. And of course, they can be, you know, audible or inaudible. For example, remember in Numbers 12, 6 to 8, Numbers 12, 6 to 8, when Miriam and Aaron thought that they were on the same level as, 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 as Moses, God told them that, look, a normal prophet, I can speak to them, you know, in a vision or a dream. But my servant Moses, I speak to him mouth to mouth. So Moses was able to hear God audibly. Indeed, it would appear as if God can come down and they're chatting. Like he came down and was chatting with Abraham. So some people have some serious, you know, um, revelations of God that is so intimate. You'll be chatting. All kinds of things. We want to hear from you. You know, my prayer is that God will speak to us in Jesus' mighty name. There are examples of audible dreams in scriptures. For example, the angel that came to Joseph and told Joseph that tonight, carry that baby Christ and run away to Egypt was an angel that came and gave instructions. And people have had angelic visitations. That story is in Matthew 2, 13. Have you had any audible dream when God actually spoke to you? Some people have conversations. We would like to know. How about inaudible, which is our focus tonight? I've shared my visions before. Most of them, either a vision or a dream, they are inaudible. For example, the vision that I had in 1985 about Lincoln Memorial, standing in front of Lincoln Memorial with a long scroll, and our former leader had a short scroll. I've shared it many times. There was no speech uttered, but I understood what God was saying as to the greatness of the work that he has in store for us and the fact that within a year, Freedom Hall, in spite of all the things we did, awesome things, was coming to an end. This was 1985 September. By 1980, um, is it 85? Yeah, 86. You know, um, Freedom Hall had, um, had packed up in the next um, no, no, I think it's 96. Anyway, one year after. It had packed up based on that vision. Sometimes I have dreams that I'm trying to sit for an exam. And I'm not ready. I have to check myself. Very unprepared. I'm sure that many people have those kinds of dreams. Nothing said, we just feel that you are unprepared. I remember when my maternal grandmother was going to pass, my paternal grandmother had passed. So I dreamt, I saw my maternal grandmother. And as I hugged her, her face changed to that of my paternal grandmother that had died. And I pushed her away and I started praying, what has the living God to do with the dead? I didn't quite understand, but I saw a tip of her white breeches when I hugged her. 
I remember. So they called me that she had gone, uh, uh, she was in the hospital and she was sick. So I rushed there. I saw her sitting on the bed. I started to make jokes, she didn't make jokes. So I hugged her. And as I hugged her, I saw that white breeches that I saw in my dream. I remembered. Then I left. On my way to Freedom Hall, we were having a meeting that day. They called me that she had passed on. So God showed me, I saw it. How about Joseph's dream? In Genesis 37, 7 to 9, of seeing the moon, the sun, 11 stars bowing down to him. That his brethren, his parents, were going to bow down to him. At the time, I dreamt, I saw myself polishing Daddy Gio's shoe. His shoe was like so massive, like that of, um, of um, you know, uh, uh, a policeman in, in London, you know? It wasn't the normal shoe. I was polishing it. So I thought, I spoke to my sweetheart that maybe we need to, you know, set up a cobbling company, maybe to start, you know, making shoes and things like that, which was foolish. Then later, God told me that, no, that the assignment I have is to beautify the work, to reform the work, to make it, you know, nice. And, and that's exactly what we've been doing. Improve on it. Use contemporary ways to preach the gospel. So God can give you dreams like that, either to warn you, or to give you instructions. Pharaoh's dream that he saw fat and lean cattle. There were no voices there, but there was a message. I remember my dad of blessed memory. He was the principal of International School University of Ibado. Anytime the staff are planning a coup, a protest or anything, everything they would do, God would have shown him the night before or a few days before. They were always amazed. <laughs> Each time he gets to the staff room or they want to do something, he would tell them, hey, you are doing this. You know, he would just quell it. God gave him advanced knowledge. So I, I just pray that God will speak to us in various ways. Even when you read the word of God, can you hear God speak to you? Yes, he speaks to you. Sometimes when you want to take a decision, for example, those that want to marry. They don't see an angel and all that, but they have peace concerning it. Is it a way of God communicating to you? Sometimes you want to take a decision and the peace is confirmatory. Sometimes you are troubled, you want to travel, but you know, everything is just, you just don't feel, maybe you are not, you, God is not speaking audibly, but they say your body is telling you, the Holy Spirit telling you, don't go on that trip, just relax. So we need to be attentive. What are the ways of God speaking? Inaudibly, there can be inner witness, inner knowing, you just say, I know. It can be a leading or a check in your spirit. Sometimes, as we learned from Pharaoh's dream concerning the fat cows and lean cows, when dreams are repetitive, it means that it is imminent. That's what was said in Genesis 41 and 32. Genesis 41 and 32. That if you have repeated dreams, wow, <laughs> it's imminent. And when you have dreams from God, especially spiritual dreams, you need to obey so that your situation will not be like that of Nebuchadnezzar. For some of these dreams, God gives you a long rope that this is going to happen one year lead time. You need to heed and sort it out. Also, God uses symbols. Sometimes you see your leader. He can come like your leader. He can see that it's you. Representative of, the, of God. Sometimes it can be a dog you see. God is speaking to you. Or a snake. All these things are symbolic. Or cats. Or a masquerade. <laughs> Do your research. 
and let us know what these symbols represent. Some people eat in their dreams. Please don't eat. It's not safe to be eating in your dreams. So these things are so important. Also, God can speak to you through circumstances. For example, you know, um, Jonah. Jonah wanted God to destroy the navy. And when God pardoned them, he was angry. So he sat under a shade. And then God sent a worm to eat that shade, that tree, that plant or shrub. And he was annoyed. Now, how can God eat this uh, thing that was giving him cover? So God used it to speak to him. Ah, ah. That circumstance, you're annoyed. So how can you be annoyed that this your shade is eaten by a worm and you don't care about the mercy that I showed to the Navy? So circumstances can come our way and God is speaking to us. We would like to hear from you. Has God spoken to you through circumstances before? How did he communicate with you? People of God, our God is an awesome God. One way or the other, either through scriptures, through prophets, through sermons, through dreams, he wants to communicate with you. And if there's a spiritual dream, usually you have an interpretation. You have an understanding of it. And if not, you can ask for interpretation. So my prayer is that as we round up this segment of communication, audibly or inaudibly, God will speak to us. And if you haven't heard God speak to you before, either audibly or inaudibly, either two dreams or circumstances, God will speak to you. He will direct you. He will lead you. He will guide you. He will warn you against dangers. By the time all the experiences of people come back as answers on this platform, you will see the kind of things that God has been doing. Amazing things. How God saves people from all kinds of calamities just through a dream or a word or a voice. Let's learn from each other. And my prayer that by the time we come back next week, you would have gotten a lot of experiences, encounters with the Holy Spirit that will move you forward in Jesus' mighty name. But if you are here, you don't know Jesus Christ as your pastor, Lord, and Savior. Please, it's important for you to embrace him right now. He's the one that speaks, he's the word. He wants to help. He wants to lead. He wants to guide. Can you imagine if they didn't tell Jesus Christ to leave Bethlehem and run to Egypt? The story will be different. So you need God to communicate with you. When I'm going through tough situations, I always remember the vision I had in 1995 when I we went to start a church. It gives me confidence that this thing is of God and the plan of God is huge. So my prayer is that you surrender your life to Jesus Christ so he can help you. He can speak to you and guide you. So if you're here, you don't know him as a personal Lord and Savior, or you're a sinner, or maybe you gave your life before, and you took it back one way or the other. Please, tonight, come back to him or surrender your life by repeating after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ, from today, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Please forgive me my sins. I plead the blood of Jesus to wash me clean of all my sins. Change my heart from a disobedient heart to an obedient heart. Please write my name in the book of life. And from today, fill me with your Holy Spirit and begin to communicate with me. Help me, bless me, warn me, lead me, direct me, instruct me, and make my life better in Jesus' mighty name. If you said those prayers, if you're on the platform, there's some numbers that are scrolling, please call us. We'd like to tell you more about what you have done and want to disciple you so that your fruits can abide. May the Lord bless you. See you next time. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you so much, Pastor, for that lovely, lovely, lovely word. 
We give God praise and we give God glory for his ever abounding care and love uh, for his children. At the beginning of that message, Pastor said something that was awesome. He said that God speaks to us diversely and through different means. And that is very true. In the book of Romans, uh, chapter 1, and the book of Romans, chapter 1, verses, uh, verses 20, the scriptures say that for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. And that is really, really true because, you know, if, 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 if when pastor was preaching, he said, uh, God, God, God speaks to you audibly and inaudibly. Uh, and that God that is speaking to you, you've never seen him, but he's speaking to you audibly and inaudibly. And if someone wanted to ask you, okay, uh, how do you want to, or what can you describe about the invisible God that you've never seen? Your simple answer will be, I don't know, because he's invisible. Uh, but uh, Romans 120 gives us a key to how we can describe or how we can begin to f figure out or get revelation into this God that we've never seen, right? Uh, it's in Romans 120, I'll just read it again. It says, for the invisible things of God, the things of God that you have never seen, all right, from the creation of the world are clearly seen. In other words, if you want to know the invisible things about God, go to the creation because in the creation story, they are visible. <laughs> right? They are visible. The things of God you cannot see, go check Genesis 1. You can see them there. And we just want to look at one of those things this evening, and that is God's power of giving. One of the things that we see in Genesis chapter 1, very remarkable, is that when God was creating things, he put in them perpetuity, okay? He put in them perpetuity. And so when, for example, uh, God created uh, the grass in verse 11 of Genesis 1, he says, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass. So we're looking for his invisible nature, the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. One of the things that we know about money, money is something we can't avoid. Everybody must interact with money throughout their lives. It's a very simple principle uh, that we coined about money, that I coined about money. <laughs> and it's this way, uh, money finishes. That's a very simple way of defining money. Money is that thing that finishes. See, if you say to me that you have $30 billion, I have zero respect for you. Absolutely zero respect for you. Why? Because money finishes. Money always <laughs> finishes. That you got a truckload of it is absolute crap. Means zero because it will soon finish. Go and check the uh, lottery winners in the UK for the last 10, 15 years. A few months later, most of them, I think over 80% of them turn out to be poppers again because money always Finish. And that's the same principle, the invisible principle of God that we see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. It says that God puts seed in everything. It is uncommon, it is unnatural for you to take a mango seed and eat the mango seed and eat it as well. Eat the mango and eat the seed as well. It's uncommon, unnatural for you to take an entire fruit, eat the fruit and eat it. It's just unnatural. Everything God gives you, he's put some portion of it for you to not consume, to not consume. And every one of us on this call, our role, our job this evening is to allow the Holy Spirit shine some light on that not to be consumed component of his gift to you. What is that part of the gift that must not be consumed? And why is it that it must not be consumed? The reason it must not be consumed is because it is to go into your future and recreate value. It's to go into your future and recreate value. Show me a man who has 10,000 Naira and then produces 30,000 Naira after a month. From that 10,000 Naira, have more respect for him than a man who says he got $10 billion because this one knows how to create wealth, the other one will consume everything. And that is exactly what God established in Genesis 1.11, the power to influence your future with what you have in your hand today. 
And I really want us to dig deep. We have many offerings, many time, many, many offering opportunities, many giving opportunities in the city of David. You can can make a difference. You know about the Trinity Towers. It's coming live. The Trinity Towers, a facade, the cotton walling is coming up. It's a beautiful project. God has really, really strengthened us to bring it to this point. And God may have put some seed in your hand for you to contribute to that project or to reach out to the dialysis patients or to reach out to the various projects that we're doing to change the lives of people around us. That is what God is reaching out for today. So if that is you, please do not hesitate. Do it cheerfully so that you can receive the blessing from the Lord. Give it with all of your heart. Give it bountifully. Give it and rejoice and thank God for the grace and the gift to change your future because of what you have in your hand today. And as we pray, the Lord himself will breathe on your gift and bless you and your generations ahead in Jesus' mighty name. Just bow your heads with me briefly and let us pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for the great and awesome word that we have heard today about hearing the voice of the Lord. Father, we pray that as we give our offerings and as we give our tithes, that your help will come upon us to hear you even more audibly, to hear your verbal and nonverbal communications, that we will not miss a single communication from you. We will pick everything that you are saying and we will live our lives in accordance to it. As we present this seed before you, we pray like the sacrifice of Abel, that you will accept them, it will be pleasing to you, you will use it to move your kingdom forward. Bless your children, your sons and your daughters for the gift that they've given cheerfully. And I pray that you would perpetuate this blessing in their generations behind them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for this blessing. In Jesus' perfect name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. God bless you for giving your offerings. On Thursday, we meet again here online. Power, praise, and Pentecost service. Join us for our sunrise service on Sunday morning, 8 a.m. And of course, the sunshine service by 10 a.m. Also in church, the physical services. God bless you for your offerings. Let us just bow our heads now and let us share the grace of fellowship together. The grace, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall do it in the house of the Lord forever and ever. In Jesus' powerful name, amen. Thank you so much for spending your evening with us. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.
Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus.